Hello, good morning. This is Breakfast with Chris Mason and Sally Nugent. Now, when will we be able to go on holiday again or travel abroad to see family again? It's a question that many of us would love to know the answer to. Well, under the government's route map out of lockdown, the earliest we could be allowed to head abroad is May the 17th, but that's now been called into question. The epidemiologist Dr Mike Tildesley says that summer holidays overseas are extremely unlikely because of the risk of travellers bringing back the various variants that are floating around back to the UK. And uh, we can talk to uh, Mike now. Morning to you. Good morning. Um, it's not going to happen, is it? It doesn't appear, according to your analysis, uh, travelling abroad this summer, given what we're seeing in Europe at the moment and uh, given the variants. Well, I mean, I think the first thing to say is I'm definitely not a decision maker and I'm a very, very far distance away from being a decision maker. I mean, what I've been saying is really just my personal opinion as to where I think we are. My real fear, actually, is, you know, the vaccination campaign is doing incredibly well in this country. I think we can't understate that, how well we've done. The concern is it's not doing quite as well in the European Union, for example. And the other concern that we have is that if we take um, a lot of countries in Europe, these variants with this E484K mutation that we see in the South African variant are much more prevalent. And sadly, some of the reports coming out about the vaccines, like the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, are nowhere near as effective against this South African variant. So my concern is with international travel, and I totally understand the frustration and the real need of people to want to travel um, as soon as possible, is that if we bring more of those variants into the country, we really run the risk of undoing all the good that we've done with our current vaccination campaign. And so given that, I mean, is, is there bluntly here a, a, a trade-off? Limit international travel significantly or pretty much entirely and things touch wood can carry on opening up here at home or the alternative there is more travel but then the prospect of further lockdowns uh, to be honest this is exactly the position that i've been in i really worry that you know i like many people would love to think that we might be able to go overseas in the summer but my worry is if we open up too quickly we then could be seeing if if these south african variants or similar come in and all of a sudden the vaccines are much less effective we might see the virus spreading more readily and really putting the vulnerable much more at risk. And then, as you said, sadly, possibly another lockdown later in the year. And I absolutely want to avoid that. You know, I very much want us to be on a one way route to freedom, as it were, as the government of stress. And I think with international travel, if we do that too quickly, then we could be jeopardising that. When I mentioned uh, on social media last night that we'd be talking to you on the programme this morning, uh, one or two people in the travel industry uh, expressed frustration um, at uh, your predictions around the likelihood of, of foreign holidays, understandably from their perspective, given how important an industry it is and how many jobs are dependent on it. I just wonder how useful these predictions actually are, given none of us can quite be certain what the future holds. Yeah, it's really difficult. And I do totally appreciate that. I mean, you know, I'm in a position I have research projects overseas that I've not been able to go to for over a year and they are severely in jeopardy because I'm not able to travel internationally. So I think it affects all of us in a really, really serious way. And um, it's hard because my concern has always been when it's come to making decisions that the government have been putting on, I would like a sort of a deadlines to be put that are achievable and then if possible bring those dates earlier my concern is if we set unrealistic expectations and then have to kick the can, can down the road in a way that actually is worse because then it's almost like we don't really know when restrictions are going to be relaxed so i would probably like to be a little bit more cautious and then if we do much better possibly we can reopen things earlier to me that's the much more sensible way to be how do you reflect on uh, our top story this morning, this whole business of the jitters that there've been in many European countries as far as the AstraZeneca vaccine is concerned, the much lower rates of vaccination there, and then I guess the potential that these conversations have as far as vaccine hesitancy is concerned, either here or overseas. People doing better with the vaccination campaign in the EU. The, the story may be a little bit different as to where we might be in terms of being able to travel. I think it's been hugely damaging in the EU, this mixed messaging when it's come to, you know, originally the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine in some country wasn't being given to the over 65s. Then there was um, uh, a lot of countries stopped using it because of these supposed blood clots that really was based on very, very flaky evidence. And now 
some countries only giving the Oxford AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca vaccine to the over 55s. I think it's really mixed messaging. The key thing to me is we need as many people as possible to take the vaccines. As I wonder how useful though they are in, in your assessment at trying to repress the virus or limit the amount of variants overseas coming back into the UK. I mean, quarantines are effective, of course, if people stay in quarantine for the full 10 days. Now, you know, of course, with the hotel quarantines that were in place, then, of course, they are they do have a high level of effectiveness because people are forced to stay in the rooms. But of course, we can't reasonably expect people going overseas to visit family to come back and spend nearly two thousand pounds in a hotel for a, for a couple of weeks. So that's the difficulty that, in a sense, if people did stay in isolation at home for the full 10 days when they get back, then theoretically the risk should be very low. But we don't need that many people not to adhere to the rules before all of a sudden we could get these new variants breaking out and a large scale problem. I appreciate it. Always nice to talk to you on the programme there. Dr Mike Tildesley. Still don't quite know what we're going to do, do we? Still uncertainty, isn't yeah, it? That's so the, difficult. With so many of these stories, yeah. it all boils down to that word. And as it? you said there, it's actually not just about holidays, it's about people seeing friends and family abroad yeah, who they haven't seen in such a long time. It is 7.37.